Good morning, everyone. Thank you for Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining our High Care Hawaii Career and Resiliency Education Support Webinar. My name is Elise Matsumoto, and I am happy to be here today to serve as your High Care's moderator. High Care seeks to develop a resilient workforce by providing education, innovative resources, and workforce development opportunities in partnership with our community contributors and alliances. Our webinar today will be approximately an hour long. Throughout the presentation, please feel free to post any questions or comments in the chat room. If you wish to remain, remain anonymous, please send me your questions via private chat. At this time, please be sure your microphones are on mute and that you have a pen or pencil along with something to write on nearby. Also, uh, should you lose connectivity to our session and are unable to log back into the webinar, please email Erin Thompson and she'll let you back in. Erin will be putting her email address in the chat room shortly. Thank you. Okay. Our guest speakers today are Corey Connor and Angela Coloretti McGough. Corey is currently the director of Leeward Community College's Job Prep Center. She has been with Leeward Community College for over 10 years. In her spare time, Corey trains in preparation for her first half marathon. A fun fact about Corey is that she also loves to treat herself on occasion to a nice slice of warm chocolate brownies with vanilla ice cream. Who doesn't, right? <laughs> Angela is currently the Interim Student Affairs Coordinator at Kapiolani Community College. She brings to the job over 20 years of experience in higher education from both here locally and in the mainland. Fun fact about Angela is she worked for one semester as a second grade teacher in Inglewood, California. All of her students were English language learners. Um, so she says she can speak Spanish pretty well of course, at a second grade level. <laughs> Angela also speaks the language of coffee every day. Her favorite drinks are esp espresso-based, sweetened over crushed ice. <laughs> well, these ladies sure know how to go for the good stuff. Please join me in welcoming Corey Connor and Angela Colorado McGough. Great. Thank you so much, Elise. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And um, let's see here. Actually, in just a second, I have to click, click a different thing. Okay. So thank you, everyone, for joining us virtually. Corey and I are really happy to be here. Um, we have done this workshop before, but never virtually. So please bear with us. We might have some technical issues, um, but it's all about education and learning. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'd like to share with you is the slides. Okay, great. So um, feel free if you need to uh, type questions into the chat boxes. Um, if you need to, we can also, um, collect those questions and then Elise will help ask them at the end. Um, again, just to reintroduce myself, my name is Angela Colorado Magoff. I work at Kapiolani Community College, but I started my career with the UH system at Leeward Community College. So I'm really happy to be back with OSUD and, and participating in this High Cares workshop. Corey? Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Corey Connor, and I work at Leeward Community College. Um, Angela and I also used to work together prior to this. Uh, we worked together in the same office. Um, and so this is a great time for us to, you know, reconnect and get to work on this together. So we are both very happy to be here today and share uh, this workshop um, on speaking the five languages of appreciation in the workplace with you all today. Great. So just a reminder, um, to have a pen and paper next to you. And um, for those of you who are curious, you'll be seeing little hearts at the bottom of the screen. And if you're curious like me, you wanna know what that means, that's just Corey and I's code for who is supposed to be talking. So two hearts is me, one heart is Corey. 
Um, so as we begin, I would love to hear from the audience. So if you could go ahead and type, think about, think about what is appreciation? Um, what does appreciation mean to you? Can it mean, how do you see appreciation at work? So go ahead and type in the chat box. Um, anybody, feel free. Silence. <laughs> okay. Great. Recognition, being valued, acknowledgement. A party. Okay, great. Nice. Compliments. Very, very good. Recognizing character and effort. Love it. You guys are pros already. Session over. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll talk more about um, this. So I noticed that everybody here, yes, I love all of these answers. Um, it, it isn't just a feeling, just from what you all are saying. You know that someone appreciates you because they're sharing, um, sharing it with you. And so we're going to be doing that. Today, I actually had to look up the definition of appreciation to refresh myself. And Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines it as a noun, which is a feeling, so yes it is, or expression of admiration, approval, or gratitude. It's a judgment, especially a favorable one. So today we're gonna look at the expression of appreciation. So we're, we'll be talking about the actions that show appreciation. So what's language? Here in the chat box, I'd love to know if there's anybody who speaks another language besides standard American English. So pigeon counts. Anyone, anyone, you can raise your hand, no? Japanese and Spanish, nice. La Ocean, nice. Okay, so how would you describe learning a new language? Anybody? Ooh, we have like multilingualists on this call. Excellent. It's hard and fun, yes. And as you get older, it seems it's harder to learn new language, I hear that. Um, yes, I'm in that club. Uh, it's difficult. It's, ooh, I like this. It's, here, listen to this analogy. It's like trying to see after swimming with your eyes open in the pool for two hours. <laughs> so, it, yeah, it takes practice. Ouch. Yep. If you practice and use it, you'll, you'll continue to, to grow in the language. If you taught second grade for a semester and then you don't use it anymore, then your language will definitely disappear after a while. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we learn. So a lot of times we start from our, our native tongue and then we're translating the words into the new language. Um, it's important that we understand the context of the words. So for example, if I'm speaking, am I reciting the lyrics to a song or am I giving you a report? Those are two completely different contexts. So we also want to talk about culture. Um, culture is a component that really shapes the whole environment that you're speaking your language in, right? So in the United States, if you're speaking in a meeting, right, with your superiors, that language is a bit more formal and it'll be different than if you're hanging out with friends and watching a sports game. Um, so walking in between one community and the next you're gonna switch more from a formal language to slang. And so that's something you also need to recognize when you're communicating with others. The tone of your, of your language can also change the meaning. So for example, if I ask Corey, how are you doing Corey? And she says, great, really great. That's different than if she says, great, just great, right? So the way that someone says the words, the way that their body language speaks to you um, also changes the meaning of the words that they're saying. So it's not just about words. Okay. All right. Okay. So how do the love languages relate to workplace behavior? So people feel valued, right? They feel valued when they're shown appreciation. 
And so let me just ask you, do you feel appreciated? And think about it, right? Do you feel appreciated by the people you work with? If you do, then you probably enjoy going to work each day. However, if you don't feel appreciated, then going to work each day may mean just going through the motions, right? And so people truly, they want to be at work, right? And the number one thing about going to work every day is not just about the amount of money that we receive, right? But whether or not we feel appreciated and whether or not we feel valued for that work that we're putting forth. And so, you know, majority of people, right, in studies, we found that majority of people leave their jobs, not because, uh, majority of people leave their jobs because they don't feel appreciated, right? And when this need is unmet, then an employee's level of engagement with their work will tend to be low. And so it goes back to building better working relationships, right? And so many of you are probably wondering why feeling appreciated in the workplace is such a big deal, right? Which it really is. And it's because each of us wants to know that what we are doing matters, yeah? We all wanna feel valued and appreciated for all the hard work that we put forth each day. Productive and engaged employees, right? So once individuals do not feel valued or appreciated, there are some trends that we might see in the behavior that happens, right? And so some things that we might be able to see in our employees are things like discouraged feelings, right? Feeling like nobody cares about the contributions that you make. Um, another thing is that employees tend to become more negative, right? And we can see things like grumbling or complaining. Um, calling in sick, team members might start to experience a disconnect or a lack of connectedness. And then eventually, you know, team members, you know, might start considering leaving the organization, right, in search for other opportunities. And so we're going to talk about this again more in our presentation, but um, I wanted to emphasize here the platinum rule, right, is that you want to remember to do unto others as they would have you do unto them. Great. So we're in a new normal. And as we know, um, you know, when the global pandemic, but the coronavirus hit Hawaii, and our civic leaders required non essential workers to stay home, many of us had extreme changes to our work lives. And um, we, um, and so some of us even lost our jobs, um, we due to the lack of business. And so now, things are very different. Um, what I would like to hear from you is how does working now differ for you from before COVID-19? Yes, so now we're working, many of us are working from home um, and spending time on the computer. Ooh, yes, eyes are fatigued, um, but we're distracted. Also, very good point. Some folks say it's quieter. Maybe they have noisy coworkers and now it, they don't. Um, less contact with coworkers. And then for those of you that are teaching, your work is totally different because you're online and not, not face to face, right? Um, you don't have contact with folks or physical interactions and missing time with your team. Yeah. So working from home um, has its pros as you can see by the chat box, but it has its cons too, you know? And so, yeah, there is both the social distancing and the physical distancing. So. We're, we're apart physically, but for some of us, we're also feeling socially distant and, and isolated. So we're gonna address these things. Um, not all of them, we don't have all of the answers, um, but through your interaction with us, hopefully we can talk a little bit more about finding a new normal that works for us. All right, Corey. Okay, so we're going to show you a quick video now on what it feels like to be heard, right? And the importance behind that. And so, you know, people tend to listen, right? Not with the intent to understand, 
right? Or I'm sorry, most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply, right? And so we're going to show you this quick video. Let me pause share. And yep, see, this is one of those hang on technology <laughs> issues. Okay. <laughs> and can I resume share? Can I? Yes. All right. Hey. Okay. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Corey. Okay. So going above and beyond, right? And so what we wanted to do in this slide here is to just share with you some basic principles, right? That can be followed to ensure success, right? Whether it be in general or if it's, you know, working on a particular activity. Um, these are just some general rules, right? So the golden rule and the platinum rule. And so the golden rule states that you should treat others the way you would want to be treated, right? And there's also the platinum rule, which shifts the focus a bit and says that you should treat others the way that they want to be treated. And again, this is just a good rule of thumb that we wanted to share with you all today. Okay, so we will be using the text um, starting with the five love languages. So uh, when we first started doing this workshop together about 10 years ago, um, it was based on this book by Dr. J Gary Chapman. Now, he was a um, counselor, he counseled married couples, and he found that there were five common patterns of expression. And so he ended up writing this book, The Five Love Languages, and this became a bestseller, of course. So then there's five love languages of children, five love languages of singles, five love languages of the military. Um, and so Corey and I decided that when we rolled this out to professionals um, at some statewide conferences, that we wanted to use this, this book, the five, love, five Languages of Appreciation in the Workplace. And in this book, Gary Chapman, um, collaborated with Dr. Paul White. He's an organizational psychologist, and um, they rolled out the MBA, or Managing by Appreciation. So um, we didn't come up with this concept. Uh, this definitely is the book, and we have resources and, and references for you at the end of our slideshow. But if you write down this website, you can also see some of the resources that we're using there. It's um, fivelovelanguages.com with the number five. And unfortunately, we don't receive any proceeds from <laughs> Gary Chapman. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go ahead and start by taking a poll. Um, what we're going to do is open up a poll for you, and then um, you will read the statement and select the letter of the phrase that most closely resembles you, and then make a note of the letters you selected. So we asked you to have something to write with just so you could make a note of, of these letters. I'm gonna pause my share briefly so that I can open up um, the poll. Hope you enjoyed that musical interlude. <laughs> All right, I used to wanna be a DJ in a past life, so. All righty, let me go back to sharing my screen. Share screen. And there it is. Okay. So hide the floating meeting controls. Alrighty, so um, thank you very much everybody for taking the poll. I'm gonna close that now. Um, and Corey's gonna talk a little bit about what we just did. All right. All right. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for taking our quick poll. Uh, we just wanted to uh, reiterate, right, that this was a just a quick, right, poll that we did for this workshop. Uh, normally, um, if you go to the fivelovelanguages.com and you're taking the actual assessment, it is much longer. And so, um, as you know, we wanted to just remind you as that, you know, as we go through each of the love languages, right, you may identify with one that is different from your results that you got from today's poll versus if you were to go into the actual assessment, right? So we did try and adapt it the best that we could to, you know, fit this one hour workshop, which, you know, this is our first time, first time doing it virtually as well. 
Um, so yeah, we just wanted to, to let you folks know, yeah, that it was a quick poll. Um, again, the full quiz can be found at the five languages.com. So if you're interested in that, um, and then what we're going to do now is I'm just going to quickly go over what the love languages are. So the letter with the most answers is likely your primary love language. So if you had more responses with the letter A, your primary love language would be words of affirmation. If your primary uh, language is B, was B, if you had most more responses for B, then your um, love language would be physical touch. If it was C, then you are receiving gifts. If it was D, then you would be quality time. And lastly, E is acts of service. And so throughout our presentation, we're going to be talking a little bit more about each of the love languages. Great, thank you. And again, um, we don't have the letters written, but um, the first answer in the, uh, that you could select would be letter A and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and share the polling results. And um, we, can, we can look at these together. So, whew, so it looks like we have a lot of folks with letter E, e and a lot of folks, yeah, with letter E. Okay, <laughs> we've got a bunch of E's here. Um, that's great. So what does that mean? That means that, here we are. Okay, I have to close, I'm sorry, I'm working on two screens here, it's new for me. Yeah. Alrighty, so um, A would be words of affirmation, E would be acts of service. So it's not surprising to me that we have a number of people here on this call that are educators that have E as their primary love language. Um, again, we're going to go through each of these individually and then we're going to, yes, can we show the poll results again? Okay. Um, so you can uh, see your letters. Yes, Brandon Marquiga, one second. Share results. Okay. So. All right, folks. Can you scroll through the results on your own or do you need me to go through them again? <laughs> Shared services at Kapilani. <laughs> you can scroll, thank you, Danny. Um, yeah, you guys. <laughs> okay, so good. I'm gonna keep talking then since you can scroll on your own. Let me minimize this. Alrighty. So it looks like less people selected B, which is physical touch. Um, and that makes sense. Again, being educators, we're taught never to touch the kids, right? So you want to make sure that you're not um, having a Title IX violation and things like that. So we will talk more about physical touch. Um, appropriate physical touch. But before we get into what each of the love languages mean, it's important to discuss that people have preferences, right? So we all know there are some people who prefer not to be thanked in groups. So if you want to recognize someone, show appreciation, we don't want to necessarily thank them in a group if that would be uncomfortable for them, because then they wouldn't be able to enjoy that. <laughs> um, some of us, we really don't mind. Some enjoy being recognized in print or online, right? So, you know, a little bio, little, little kudos in the bio. But we all have colleagues who hate having their picture taken or video taken of them. So we want to honor their, their preference. Some folks, like was mentioned in our um, chat box, they like a party. So to honor them or recognize their contributions, you know, have a potluck. But some people don't want to be highlighted in any way. So these folks would be content if you just walked into their office or, you know, gave them a phone call and just express appreciation for them privately. So that we're going to keep saying, we're going to keep saying that over and over that people have preferences. And as we're talking, 
what you're learning as part of your love language communication is to also ask what people prefer before you do the acknowledgement. So words of affirmation. We had a couple people selecting words of affirmation and um, folks that prefer this as their language of appreciation, they like praise and they avoid criticism. So, you know, these are the folks who get feedback from a survey or feedback on their, you know, employee evaluation and everything is all perfect. And then there's maybe one point of criticism and that's the only thing they see, right? Um, folks who like the words of affirmation would like for you to be specific with your feedback. So for example, a lot of times we just say good job or great work, um, but you want to give them a specific acknowledgement. And then it needs to be in the context of a positive and healthy relationship. And this was really important. This was new um, in that in the languages of appreciation book. And it made a lot of sense to me because if you acknowledge someone, but you don't have a good relationship with them, it might feel insincere and maybe even sarcastic or cruel. So um, what they recommend is that if you're in the midst of a conflict with your staff member or your colleague, a compliment probably won't be taken as a compliment. So you want to wait. <laughs> And then you want to clear up whatever the conflict is. Um, and then you can communicate with integrity and a positive attitude. So you can tell that folks speak this love language because they're always providing you with words of affirmation. That's a good indicator to see um, who is in this love language or language of appreciation. So now it's your turn. How do you show appreciation at work to someone whose primary love language is words of affirmation. So I gave you all a, a couple of examples. Um, go ahead and type in our chat box and share some of the ideas you have about words, giving words of affirmation, especially during this time when we're not physically together. Don't everybody at once jump in. A thank you card. I love it. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Yep. Connecting with people one on one. Yes. So when you're telling someone good job on that project, I really liked how you dot dot dot. That is very good direct feedback. Um, so Nikki Brown, you're, you're my person. She e ends her emails with you the best. I in end my emails with little cartoons <laughs> that say you the best or things like that. Um, thank you for, and then the specific feedback. Ooh. Okay. So Marissa says make a certificate of recognition. So yes, that, those are written words and we're actually going to talk about that also. Um, um, nice. This is great. I like how you are always there for me and I can depend on you. That is a good affirmation of the actual, the actual action that the person is doing and it positively reinforces that. Yeah. Okay, great. So the second one was physical touch. And as I mentioned before, we, 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 not only can we not touch you <laughs> in the, through the computer, we probably want to not be touching other people. Um, so appropriate physical touch in the workplace is, you know, like we're in Hawaii. Sometimes before COVID, we would maybe give a hug or a kiss to say hello um, with permission. But... The culture and comfort level and um, who you are in position to the person that you're talking to and maybe touching is really important. So the first thing is there are appropriate touches that, that we can do. Um, and I'll ask you for those in the next slide. Um, in order to tell who is sort of this physical touch um, speaker, 
just observe their behavior when you're in person with them. Um, you can see that they're the ones that pat people on the back. They're always asking or giving a hug. Um, if you see people shy away, you know, you go in for the hug and they're like, no, they're definitely not physical touch. We want to respect those barriers. So in the chat box, yes, no touch. Please um, share how you show appreciation to someone in a work setting whose primary love language is physical touch. So giving a lay, that is a good one. Um, high five, yes. High five is an appropriate, that is appropriate, appropriate touch. This bump, I love this, yes. Ooh, okay, so someone is talking about bringing candies and we'll get back to that. Um, I love that everyone wants to, to see what we're writing. So culture, comfort letter, level and hierarchy. So if I'm your boss, if you're, or if you're my peer counselor or a student worker, I'm probably not gonna ever touch you. <laughs> Cause not only is it not appropriate, but um, the, the power dynamic there, or the hierarchy is not, it makes it even less appropriate. Okay, secret handshake, yes. These are great ideas, elbow bump. Okay, so yeah, I got elbow bumped and then foot tapped, like kind of like kid and play the other day. It was hilarious. So here's some ideas that Corey and I came up with. Um, so since we're doing the email, someone had said they write you the best at the bottom. You could do a virtual hug and literally you can type in parentheses and the word hugs and parentheses and that's like a virtual hug. Air, air high five. Air, air kisses and air hugs. So I'm gonna open up my, I, I wanna see everyone in the grid and I can't. Um, I wanna see you. But anyway, everyone go ahead and give your computer screen or your, your phone screen a high five. High five, high five, Corey. Woo high five, yeah. So even though we're virtual, the emotion is there. Um, also, talking about giving a lay, um, I really liked how uh, Kapiolani Community College did a video for, for their graduates. And one of our deans, the first thing that they did was they actually did like they were giving a lay. And I thought that was really awesome in terms of showing that there's physicality, even though we're not able to, to actually touch someone. Um, if we do get out of this COVID, environment where we are able to see people and go closer than six feet to them. Um, then some of the things that Corey and I also came up with were the A hug or the side hug where together you make an A, you kind of just hug at the top. Um, and then with the people that we have in our own homes, it's important that we also look out for those folks who need physical touch. So my two kids that are at home with us, now they're physical touch people and so before bed every night they always come into the room to get their hug which is really cute because they're 13 so all right receiving gifts is this me yet again <laughs> I'm gonna hand it to Corey okay go Corey all right so receiving gifts right so it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, a very expensive monetary gift, right? It could be, you know, a tangible reward or a token of appreciation, right? Again, it doesn't have to be expensive, right? But just knowing that a gift that the person will value, it, it, that ultimately has the most impact, right? And so when you're giving someone a gift, you know, especially if their love language is receiving gifts, right? You want to consider that, the, the person that is going to be receiving the gift, that it's something that they would appreciate, right? Um, it's something that you put some thought into, right? And not just giving the gift based on what you think the person would like, but really thinking about what the person would truly want, right? And giving them that gift. So an example of this could be, uh, let's see, if I only like to eat Baskin and Robbins, mint chocolate chip ice cream, right? 
And I was to tell Angela, like, let's go out and have a, let's treat ourselves, right? You know, um, and so if she was to recommend, you know, maybe we just go and get, I don't know, dryers, right? Ice cream. Again, it's thinking about, right, what, what I would truly write, want, right? And her giving me a gift that I would appreciate. So just putting some thought into that, I think, is what's important, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be an expensive gift, but just the thought that counts. Okay, I'll jump back in. Okay. So thank you, Corey. Corey's awesome. So if you give a gift to someone who doesn't have this as their, their love language, and most of the people on this call do not have gifts as their love language, um, it can actually seem like you're sending them a bribe or you're trying to gain favor. So again, you want to recognize the people who um, like to like to receive gifts because those are the folks who are always giving you gifts. So earlier I said, oh, we're going to talk a little bit more about bringing candy to the office. So candy, bringing the candy, like that's a, actually a gift. Um, and that's something that you're bringing into the office to share with everybody. Um, I do it because I don't want it sitting at home because then I'll eat it all, right? But also um, it's, it's a way to demonstrate that you appreciate others. Uh, folks who do things like bake you their homemade banana bread or um, writing the notes. So one thing we always tell our students that we work with after their interviews, we tell them to handwrite and mail. Yes, I know it's old fashioned, but handwrite and mail a thank you letter because what that is, is it's words of affirmation, thanking the person for the interview. And it's a tangible thing. The same with the gift with the certificate of appreciation. It's words, but it's also a tangible physical thing. And so for people who like to receive gifts, this is something they will cherish. So we talked about some of the examples of showing appreciation. Now, given that we're in um, our physical distancing time, what are some ways that you can show appreciation at work to someone whose primary love language is receiving gifts? Okay, coffee. Whoever Nikki Brown is, I'm going to look you up after this. <laughs> You're like my spirit person. A virtual gift card is perfect. Um, a flower. I love flowers. And it's like, especially on our campus, you can find them, you know. Snacks. Again, Melissa, you are also my spirit person. And then flowers that have a lot of uh, fragrance, like Eileen is saying, Pua Kenny Kenny, you know, you can have, or a lay, you can have something small that just radiates all throughout the room, right? Wow. Brenda Marquiga, I'm gonna have to get a hold of Linda Duong after this. So little, leaving little gifts. That's cute, yeah. And the thing is, even though we're physically away from people, um, for example, recently my boss, he, he was like, when are you gonna be home? I have something to drop off. So, you know, my husband and him socially distanced themselves and he dropped off a little gift of appreciation and it was really sweet um, to go out of their way, you know, to have him go out of his way to bring something to my home. Um, yes, and then talking about being fair. so. This is a good point. Um, the seeing, treating everyone fairly and meeting their love language, exactly. So, bringing omiyagi back for everyone when you come back from vacation. That is such a Hawaii thing and I love that. Some people are gonna be really excited about that and some people are like, thanks. Um, I'm not really a gifts person, but it is really good to recognize that you wanted to give everybody something. Um, However, if you're like a supervisor and you're trying to recognize an individual, um, you wanna find out if gifts is their primary love language by observing their behavior, and then that would be how you would appreciate them. Um, if you don't appreciate a person with a gift because they like um, words of affirmation, that's fine. They actually won't feel upset with you that they didn't get a gift. All right. Moving along, quality time. All right. Okay, so my quality time folks, right? So these people, 
prefer, if, you're, if your primary love language is quality time, then you would prefer being together and doing things with friends and loved ones, right? And so basically these people here, right, prefer to meet in person, right? Or now it could be a one-on-one -on -one meeting over Zoom. Um, but they want to do things with other individuals, right? And they appreciate having that undivided attention, right, from others. And really the, the idea behind this is that being there for this type of person is very critical. And to acknowledge this individual, you want to make sure that you're demonstrating compassion and also listening, right? Listening without any distractions. That's very important. So this may mean, right, that if you're in a meeting um, with someone and you know their primary love language is quality time, it may mean that you have to put down your cell phone, right, and not, you know, multitasking and doing two things at once, right? But being there in the present, right, not texting while they're trying to explain something to you. Um, another thing that they might not appreciate is if you're constantly looking at your watch, you know, checking the time, because this might make the person who is quality time, it might make them feel that they're being rushed, right? Um, and that you're not in the present and you're not engaging in those quality conversations with them without being interrupted. And so by quality time, we mean, you know, spending time with colleagues, giving them your focused attention, and then also working collaboratively with them. And really the key element behind this is that a quality time person, right? It's not about the workplace proximity, but more about the personal attention that you're giving to that person. Okay. They also like when people take time to understand what they are saying and how they are feeling. And so really showing them that you are there to understand what they're seeing and feeling is very important. When working with a quality time person, right? Um, You'll want to listen for feelings as well as thoughts. Also affirming their feelings, right? Even if you disagree with their conclusion. So these individuals just want to be heard, right? And a good example of that was the video that Angela just showed us on the example of the nail in the head video, right? You'll also want to remember to resist the impulse, right? To interrupt a quality time person. And lastly, quality time people desire quality conversations, okay? And so examples of this um, could be, right, like we said, you know, maybe scheduling time with a person one-on-one, -on -one, finding a quiet space where you can give them, you know, your undivided attention, right? So now it's totally different, right? You know, maybe it could be when you're on your Zoom call, you know, maybe just, again, finding that quiet space where you're not being interrupted by the kids or just everything else that you have going on at home. Um, and then another thing too could be, you know, now when we're on these meetings, right, over Zoom, you know, could be, you know, just to kind of put yourself on mute, right, when they're speaking so that, you know, there's not background noise, again, you're, you know, truly listening, you can engage into that conversation, right? Um, so those are just some, you know, pointers on, you know, how we can create these quality conversations with someone whose primary love language is quality time. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and if you could type in how do you recognize, it, type into the chat feed, how do you recognize the work of someone whose primary love language is quality time? Happy hour. I love it, Nikki. Giving them time off with the family. Yeah, that's very important, right? So we have, let's see, one-on-one -on -one meeting, face and look at them when they're speaking, put down my pen. Yes, that's awesome. I like it. Take them to lunch. That's awesome. Yep. Having a working lunch. Yeah, I think checking in, right, every day shows, right, that you're, take them out for ice cream. I love it. Taking them out to do something that they enjoy. That holo holo feeling gets people into their element, yeah, for sure, especially now during this time, right? 
I love it. Yes, doing something with them, but making sure it's not rushed and it's very genuine. Yes. Awesome, guys. All right. Thanks, everyone. Okay, and this brings us to the last one here, which is acts of service. So access service people, right? They, these people do not request assistance, but they enjoy when others help. And so to acknowledge this person, right? You want to volunteer by saying things such as, you know, let me do that for you, or tell me what I can do to help you. When you're working with access service people, um, the idea is that you want to refrain from asking, right? You want to just jump in and do exactly how, do exactly what that person would do, right? And so offering your help as a statement rather than a question is what's important. And so these access service people, they like to create a stress-free environment, right? These are the people that are going to just jump in and help, right? Wherever they can. They're just going to say, hey, let me, you know, I already have some things, you know, already planned out. Like, let me just put it together and I'll share it with the group, right? And they're also amazing. They're amazing at doing the tasks. Like, they're really good at it. And so you appreciate someone, right, that helps, these people help ease the burden, right, of that responsibility, right, on the group. Um, individuals whose primary love language is acts of service, again, they enjoy helping others and they're creating a stress-free environment, right? And so they're always gonna go out and try and help wherever they can. And then when working with the acts of service person, right, I think what's very important here is that you want to remember to ask for clear instructions on how that person would do something, right? because sincere acts of service must grow out of a genuine effort to really help others. And so if it's not done exactly how they would do it, they might, acts of service people might not necessarily receive that message as a token of appreciation, okay? And so prefers that help is given voluntarily and at the same level of quality as they would do it. So again, that's really important when you're working with the acts of service person, right? So if you're going to go out of your way and do something for that person, again, make sure that you're doing it exactly how they, are, they would do it, okay? Um, and remember to also have a cheerful and positive attitude when you're working with access, um, access service people, right? Um, these individuals whose their personalities, they tend to be more perfectionist, right? And they resist the help of coworkers because they feel or think that it will not be done to the level of their satisfaction. So again, what's important is that when you're helping out your colleagues, right, who are access service, it's important for you to clarify, right? Clarify with them, you know, how they want the task done, and then also never leave it incomplete, right? So you're going to want to finish what you started, okay? If not, it's just going to drive an access service person crazy. So one way we can do that now, right, since we're not working, you know, face to face is to keep the lines of communication open. I think that's always important, but more than ever, you know, it could be where you're creating like a Google Doc and everybody can have access to that and constantly communicating to make sure that you're getting what you said you would do done, right? And then updating that person on the progress of that as well, okay? So this might be that you might want to find a clear place, right, where you guys can all you know, put down like a detailed list of instructions on how that person would like it to be done. And then having that as your working document with your group. Okay. Um, now more than ever with this new normal, you know, we need to remember that when we're working with the access service person, we need to follow up, right? We always need to follow up. Um, speaking from my experiences, right? Um, we just launched our first University of Hawaii Community College's virtual job fair last month. And so, you know, we had, you know, a very clear list of instructions and tasks that the group had to do. And so, you know, making sure that we followed up, right, we kept the lines of communication open so that everybody knew what the responsibilities were, um, what the tasks, you know, what tasks needed to be done, um, when it needed to be completed by. Um, and again, I think it's just about, you know, really getting things done. And even though we're not able to see our coworkers every day, 
there you know, are still really great ways that we can all do this virtually together, right? And I think what I, the biggest takeaway for me and what I learned from it is that, you know, we're all in it together. We're all learning together. And so it was our first time ever, right, for, for us and for the students that attended. Um, and it just works, right? It works. You know, it just, it just shows that we can still get things done, right? Um, even though we're not physically seeing each other, you know, but it works and we still got the job done. So, yeah. So, Corey, the majority of the folks here were acts of service. Mm -hmm. So this is their primary language and they probably know it best. Yeah. Um, so the reminder is you're learning the language of others that maybe you don't speak very well. Mm -hmm. uh, and since we're coming to the close of the hour, I'm going to fast forward if that's okay. Yes. I didn't realize we only have two minutes left. Okay. <gasps> I'm having so much fun and I talk a lot. So um, on your own, go ahead and practice and think about what you're going to um, improv. Um, we do have a minute or so for questions. If you would like to enter any in the chat box or if Elise, you, you got any private questions? We did. We got a few. But what I'd like to do is um, there's one really good question I think that both that everyone in the audience can learn from. And it the person is asking or would like to state, I really like this idea of the platinum rule and treating others the way they want to be treated. How would you recommend we approach the subject with coworkers if we want to start developing a culture of appreciation in our office? Ooh, that's a great question. That is a great question. No. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, the first thing I would recommend is that you have a common framework. And so that's why we're doing this session in here. So for those of you who are on this webinar with your colleagues, you're already ahead of the game because you can speak about, oh, I'm acts of service. Oh, I like, you know, um, coffee, right? So it, uh, by doing this, this little survey with your coworkers, you'll be able to have a common language or any other kind of tool that that you use um, to just start the communication because otherwise it's a little bit awkward. Mm -hmm. um, but I do recommend if you're not in that position where you can just say everyone has to take this quiz and everyone has to tell me what it is they came up with, um, that individually you just ask. You just tell people, you know, I really um, wanted to thank you for the work that you did on such and such. Um, what would you prefer? Uh, is it okay if I mention it in our group meeting or would you rather just, you know, me tell you one-on-one? -on -one? And so in that way, you're going to learn what their, their language is. And as you keep practicing it and asking people and learning, you're going to be the role model of what it means to be, to show appreciation in the workplace. Um, but I do recommend if you have the opportunity, if you can ask the decision maker to do, the, you know, to send out this website and have people do this quiz and, bring it up in staff meeting or something. It just helps to have the conversation when you're sharing a vocabulary. I think that's a great idea. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Corey and Angela, for such an enlightening presentation. Your presentation shows everyone that even a few words or gestures of appreciation can mean the world to someone. On behalf of Leeward Community College, the High Cares team, and our affiliate partners, Thank you everyone for joining us today. This concludes our webinar for today. Take care and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Take care, thank you. Mahalo.